Hello, I'm your host, Dr. Braha. Welcome to the ZerMed Show. On the show, we will feature local community physicians who are experts in their respective field and who will share their experiences and wisdom with us. We cover a broad range of health topics on the show, and today we will, dis we will discuss the mobile crisis unit at One Brooklyn Health. We have the pleasure of Dr. Lisa Nichols joining us today. She's the manager of the mobile crisis unit here at One Brooklyn Health. Welcome to the show, Dr. Nichols. It's really a pleasure to have you. Um, we are talking today about the mobile crisis unit, which um, relates uh, to people who are currently suffering from a mental health crisis. And this is your, your field of, of specialty for a number of years. And before we start informing the audience about the mobile crisis unit, uh, let's talk a little bit about you, Dr. Nichols. Tell us where you're from, how did you end up in, in such a field, and, and how did you end up here at One Brooklyn Health? I'm originally from Washington, D.C., and I ended up in New York uh, through an internship with actually our sister hospital, Interfaith Medical Center, where I completed my internship training, and I have a PhD in clinical psychology. And so you've been in Brooklyn for a number of years now since leaving Washington, mm -hmm. D.C. Um, and here in Brooklyn, you, you were at Interfaith initially, which has now become a part mm -hmm. of One Brooklyn Health. Correct. And now you've been working at the Brookdale University Hospital, mm -hmm. which is part of One Brooklyn Health. Um, what is your field? Describe to the, the viewers today, uh, what do you encompass in your course of care? What, what do you cover uh, in working in mental health here at One Brooklyn Health? Well, it's, it's trauma-focused, it's crisis-focused. Um, we're doing a lot of CB, CBT training as well when you're working with patients um, are some of the, my personal interests and focus. Um, so trauma, patients who have gone through some, some terrible event in their life or, or some disruptive event, mm -hmm. uh, what does that normally mean with, with trauma? What kind of events do you see most commonly that you're helping patients with? It can be uh, from the basic loss bereavement, which COVID right now, there's a lot of trauma right. going on. Tremendous, tremendous amount of loss with the pandemic. With the pandemic, generational loss that's going on. Uh, community working uh, is very poor community. And so often there's uh, economic trauma, family trauma, uh, generational trauma that impacts them. And so uh, working at those different levels, trying to help the community and or family or and or patient to uh, do better or be more successful is what's important. I mean, th th these areas of life for some people breeze right by. They have a loss, they deal with it quickly and move on. And then for some of the for people watching here today, there are patients who have a hard time coping with mm -hmm. some of the things that other people may find not so important, like losing a job or not being able to pay the rent. And, and tell us how that really affects somebody's mental health and, and how you see it manifested. Um. People respond differently. Um, some people just stop functioning. They stop taking showers. They're not eating properly. They can gain weight. They can lose too much weight. Uh, they're not able to take care of their children um, or themselves or family members. Um, they become disconnected. Like they can't, um, they can no longer process information. It's like they're on a standstill and they're trying to move forward, but they're physically and mentally not able to do so. I've had patients describe it to me sometimes that, uh, for example, I, I know someone who went through a loss. And uh, unfortunately, most of us have been through a loss of, of a family member, unfortunately, especially during the pandemic. But the way that they described it to me is they felt like a zombie. Mm -hmm. And that they were not actually in the reality of what was going on, and, and they were just existing or breathing mm -hmm. for days mm -hmm. or, or, or a week. And, and that seems like a type of trauma Mm -hmm. uh, you know, mental health crisis that someone might be going through that you would, you would do. It. Is that so? Yeah, that would that would be so. I mean, the, the impact on this community is even harder because they were considered essential workers, so they were expected to go to work as well. And then they were trying to deal with other people losing their jobs, so they're trying to deal with staying in their homes. Uh, what do you do with your children? Um, and it just compounded on top of each trauma, each event, each unsuccessful action. Further, further mounted on top of their on top of them. They're, they're, they're suffering. You're right in this area here, for example. I mean, we, we have a number of patients from this area where uh, they worked at the airport, or they worked in healthcare, um, or they were in the uh, law enforcement uh, you know, area, 
And so they were forced to be working during this pandemic while you know the world is crumbling around you. You're still mm-hmm. going to work for an eight or 12 or, or longer hour shift. Um, and dealing with mental health sometimes takes a, a back seat, unfortunately. Mm-hmm. Uh, one of the problems that I think we've seen in the city and, and probably in elsewhere in this country is access to mental health care. Mm-hmm. How, how does One Brooklyn Health and, and your team sort of enable better access to mental health care? Uh, the key for the team is that we go out into the community. We meet people where they are. You go out into their homes. Correct. We go into their homes when they let us in <laughs> and we assess them. If not, hallways, street corners. Wherever um, it might be. Wherever it might be. We don't do street homeless. There are specialized teams that do street homeless. You have to have some sort of home. Like they can say, oh, he's always at the bodega downstairs. That's fine. We'll go to the bodega and you know, maintain but you have confidentiality. To have a, a place where you live. Exactly. Yeah. And so in, in your line of work with this mobile crisis unit, you're able to go out to the patient as opposed to waiting for the patient to get to you or waiting for the patient to get to you when something really, really bad happens. Mm-hmm. So sort of a preemptive approach. Exactly. Um, we were talking a bit before the show. It seems like anyone could reach out. Mm-hmm. Tell us how, how this experience sort of you know, comes about. Is it a mom calls about a child who may be depressed or a girlfriend calls about their boyfriend who may uh, they have just broken up with, but no, he's or she is going through a tough time. How does how does it work? How do they initiate the steps? To make a referral to the mobile crisis team, there are 19 teams in the city. There are five teams that are specialized um, for children, so they'll even go into the schools uh, to come help the schools if there's something that's going on. So with there's a, child. a team for pediatric for younger patients. Even. Exactly. Okay. Our team, well, uh, a lot of the adult teams also see children, but those are internal to the hospital. So you can either make a referral through NYC Well, which is called a single point of access entry to mobile crisis teams in the city. You call 1-888-NYC Well. Um, They will triage the case. They'll make sure it's an appropriate referral for mobile crisis. That's like not like a 911. The key word in our title is mobile crisis team is crisis. We're not emergency. We're not 911. Um, they'll do the triage, and then, some, then they'll send the referral to the appropriate team, depending upon catchment area. Um, deemed, um, if it's deemed necessary, then they'll send out 911 even before we go out. Um, right, you don't want someone who's in the process of committing suicide or correct. about to harm themselves or at the top of a building ready to jump. That's a 911 That's situation. A 911. Mm-hmm. You may become involved, but exactly, we want our viewers to understand that there's a difference between 911 and the mobile crisis unit. So they call 888-NYC well as an access point, or if they're already linked into the One Brooklyn Health System, they can contact their mental health provider or or the service to have you come out or one of your team members to come out. They arrive to someone's home. The patient, the person is suffering from a a breakdown, a, a mental crisis. They're depressed. They're, like you said, not showering, not eating, not going out to work. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they're not taking care of themselves. How, how do you start that encounter in the home? What goes on in the home? And then how does that transition to maybe a longer term process to keep this patient better? Well, key is that we're a short term process. <laughs> so we often come out to people's homes once, maybe twice. Depends what's going on. Sort of as a, as a initial let's get the ball rolling type. Exactly. Let's uh, get them back into treatment. Right. Do they need treatment? Um, I always tell people, people have the right to refuse services. Um, you may not be feeling well. You may not be what the rest was psychologically stable, like we'd like you to be, but you do have rights. So we go to assess, you know, how can we or try and educate you about mental illness, about medication, about what services are out there and help guide you towards what might be beneficial for you to remain stable in the community. So the, the goal is to help, you know, I want the viewers to understand that this team is is coming out to help and bring up somebody who's in trouble mm-hmm. and to re- return them to normal. It's not like we're going out to take somebody, grab them and lock them up or put them away somewhere mm-hmm. to, to bring you back into normal life, into normal functioning life and, and into the community. Mm-hmm. So you go out there, you meet with somebody maybe once or twice and you get them into the mental health, health care that they need here at One Brooklyn Health. Who might they see and follow up? A psychiatrist, a psychologist, or or their mental health counselors? How does that process work? What should they expect? Well, um, we usually have two to three people going out. The teams are either outreach coordinators, um, social workers, psychologists, or psychiatry residents. We'll go into the home to talk to them. We have a conversation, just like we're having a conversation right now. We'll have a conversation where we'll throw in some questions to try and assess. 
where you are and how you're doing, how stable you are. We will look in your refrigerator for elderly people. I'll look to see if they have food. I will look to see in the summertime, do they need AC? Um, I will look to see if they're bed bugs. Yes, we will come to your home. We're trying not to bring them to our home. So if we don't sit down in your home, don't be upset. Um, but we will go to your home. I mean, um, and you can arrange for some of these social support services to begin mm -hmm. to help support them as well. Exactly. So it's really a comprehensive approach. It's not just the mental health, it's what's going on around the patient as well that can be helped. Uh, when they, when a patient comes from the transitioning from, hey, we came to their house to intervene and to help and to, to link them up with care, as they come to a clinic, say at one of the One Brooklyn Health Centers, uh, and care goes on you know, longer term, uh, what should patients expect? You know, I think there's a stigma about mental health mm -hmm. and going to someone who specializes in mental health. Mm -hmm. uh, but what should they expect? How does the process go? How do, how do, they, do, do they always need medicines? Is it just psychotherapy, talk mm -hmm. therapy? You know, how, what should someone expect when they come into the mental health community? Uh, that's a good question. What should one expect? One should expect to feel better. One should expect to be validated in their symptoms and should be uh, feel comfortable enough to share where their stressors are and or the family difficulties they're having. Uh, one should feel that the clinicians are supporting them in their journey, whether it's in substance use or mental illness, and that they don't have to always feel bad or always uh, cycling out of control, that there can be control in their lives and that they can manage mental illness. Now, mental illness might be just um, um, due to you know a certain bereavement or something. A trauma. A, a trauma, or, uh, exactly. Event, right. Punctual. Uh, Punctual, yes. <laughs> yeah, a temporal. A ter <laughs> right, right. If someone watching here has just, you know, it, we, we just got through a terrible pandemic, or we're still going through a terrible pandemic, but we've mm -hmm. lost thousands and thousands of New Yorkers. And so if someone is dealing at home with the loss of a family member or two or three, mm -hmm. and they're having a hard time dealing with it, this is a place to consider to exactly. come and, and seek out mental health. It may not be that you had a problem before, mm -hmm. and it may not be that you'll have a longer term problem after, but there is. A short-term short -term. fix for what you're going through exactly. and we shouldn't be go astray exactly you shouldn't feel afraid to suggest mental health services to people right it should not be viewed as something like oh they're in trouble or they're a bad person we have a lot of uh, this is a large afro-caribbean community where mental health is not viewed as being strong or that you're not doing something right or you're weak but it's not a sign of weakness exactly and there's no harm in in saying, I just need someone to talk to. Mm -hmm. And these are the professionals mm -hmm. that we have to talk mm -hmm. to. And the mobile crisis unit is available in times of real need or stress where there's a, a, a crisis going on. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we talked a bit before uh, the show about, you know, cases that we remember and, and how do we cope with this. And, and for people watching today who might be in the healthcare field, mm -hmm. Sometimes the provider needs a provider, mm -hmm. the, the doctor needs a doctor, or the psychiatrist needs a psychiatrist. Mm -hmm. How does your team and how do you sort of cope with seeing people at some of the worst times that a person could go through? So when you're entering someone's home, it's a privilege. Uh, it's an intimate thing where you're, you're, you're seeing another side of themselves that maybe the clinician in the hospital may not see. And when you're going there, you want to be respectful of their cultural norms. Like people ask us to take off shoes sometimes. Uh, people will make suggestions to please have water and eat with them before we do an assessment. We have to try and explain to them that, no, we're here to see you and to be supportive for you. You don't have to take care of us. But then when we come back, we do supervision, uh, we debrief different teams. You talk about the providers. The providers. Yeah. Um, you can use humor because humans are funny. Because uh, it must be, it must, it, there must be a significant level of stress that you and your team go through, mm -hmm. you know, meeting people who are going through a mental health crisis, people that are thinking about killing themselves, or, you know, they, they've gone through some terrible event in their life that you could never imagine yourself mm -hmm. going through. And, mm -hmm. and that must be, it must be quite stressful. Well, and with the avid, added level of COVID, I mean, the team is afraid of catching themselves, bringing it back to their families. Or we're going to people's homes with face shields and goggles and N95s and gloves, and you're sweating underneath, and you're trying to take someone's temperature. And <laughs> However hard it was 10 years ago, now today with the pandemic, it certainly is, is harder. And I see that in my own practice and at my own hospital, that there are, there are providers, nurses, doctors, technicians, who really need their own level of, of mental health counseling or treatment because you know working in the service industry is difficult during the pandemic you're putting your life on the line every day 
So if you're working at the airport and you're putting bags on a plane or cleaning a plane, you know that you're putting yourself at risk because you're around other people who may have COVID and that stresses people out. And if you're a nurse or you're working in One Brooklyn Health or anywhere else in the city, uh, this is another population of people who probably needs to, to think about pursuing mental health care. Well, the Department of Psychiatry during the pandemic was instrumental in offering our services to the rest of the hospital, especially to medical clinicians, but also to people in housekeeping and engineering because they were infected as well. So we made sure that everyone knew we could meet with us. Uh, it was anonymous. Uh, no one knew your business. No one knew that you were seeking. To just but, talk to somebody. But even the healthcare <laughs> providers were seeking out mental health care. And for our viewers, you know, they're really, you know, that stigma has to go away that giving into your depression or your anxiety or whatever trauma you're going through and giving in and going to seek help is not a sign of weakness. Mm -hmm. uh, it's an opportunity for strength. Mm -hmm. And um, just so the viewers understand that many of us in healthcare have been doing this since we began our career because mm -hmm. we understand the stresses that people go through and the potential really great benefits of seeking counseling or psychiatric care and psychological counseling. Mm -hmm. uh, here at One Brooklyn Health, you have a tremendous uh, staff, mm -hmm. you know, here on site and then your yeah. staff, which goes out to the home. So there really is comprehensive um, care available. How do patients access it aside from uh, eight, the 888 NYC well? well mm -hmm. uh, they can come out to the Brooklyn Health Care Centers, one mm -hmm. Brooklyn Health Care Centers, correct? Mm -hmm. Established primary care. Exactly. Just to clarify the 1888 NYC well is just to get mobile crisis teams. Everything else uh, in the Department of Psychiatry, you can just call the hospital directly. And make an appointment. Make an appointment. No referral is needed. No referral is needed. Interfaith and uh, has a large psychiatric department as well as substance use services. They also have general mental health, but they offer detox and rehab. They offer day programs, a CDOS chemical dependency program. Uh, they have inpatient, outpatient, as well as Brookdale Hospital has inpatient, outpatient for adults and children. Um, we also have, you know, psychiatric emergency room. Uh, or something. So there's, there's a specialist for, for most areas of mental health Correct. available. Mm -hmm. So if someone is suffering from a, a mental health crisis that's related to substance abuse, mm -hmm. drug abuse, alcohol abuse, mm -hmm. how do they seek out care? Do they first go to uh, get into a program to help stop? using substances or should they mm -hmm. first go to a psychiatrist or they, how should they direct their care or, or is it do everything at once? Kind of do everything at once. Uh, depends what you're using. Right. <laughs> are you using alcohol, are you using crack cocaine, methadone, heroin, opiates will decide which path and when was the last time you used, whether you have to go through the emergency room to a detox or not, uh, whether you can start in a rehab, a 28 day rehab. So it all depends what you're coming for. You help them navigate this. Exactly. So for the person watching today who, who's in that sort of situation, it you don't need to know where to go first, just need to call. Mm -hmm. and, and the professionals here will navigate that pathway for you. Exactly. You know, I, I've often seen patients in the emergency room that they just show up to the ER because they didn't know what to do next. Mm -hmm. So maybe just picking up that phone and making a call and, and establishing care at One Brooklyn Health with uh, the mental health care team here is, is a good step. Um, do you deal with eating disorders? Do you deal with um, you know, patients who have issues with the way their body looks? Does that mm -hmm. come up at times? Body image, definitely. Um, I, I, don't, I, I can't speak for, for specialized in eating disorders because that is a subspecialty in itself, but certainly the depressive side we can work on. If there's any psychosis involved, we can work on with medication management and therapy. Um, the inpatient units could help as well, but yes, we do. We are fully comprehensive in the psychiatric disorders. And trauma, we talked about death, mm -hmm. dying, and injuries. It's a trauma center here. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm assuming you deal with that quite a bit. People with who are involved in trauma, domestic violence, shootings, stabbings. Yes. There are te there are t people that meet directly with the patient in the emergency room if it is a domestic violence situation. Um, could get somebody into a shelter if necessary, a DB shelter. Um, they are, if it's a rape victim, the R team says will work specifically with the person to help he or she uh, to navigate the system and to make sure they know their rights and um, everything's taken care of. So we do have that right in the emergency room. People I've seen in the emergency room when I used to work in the ER, they often care about confidentiality. Mm -hmm. They're worried that everyone's gonna know their problem. Mm -hmm. What can we speak to them about confidentiality? Psychiatry, is, even general medical staff can't read psychiatric notes without breaking the glass. So if anything, psychiatry is the most confidential in all of the departments of uh, the hospital. Yeah, we, 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 and when we mentioned breaking the glass for our viewers, uh, 
these days we all almost all use electronic records mm -hmm. and there are sensitive parts of that record where in order to get into you you need special special access mm -hmm. not any doctor could just log in mm -hmm. it's not like the nurse or the uh the technician down the hall who wants to know your information mm -hmm. right exactly it, it's it's well kept and, and you and your your secrets so to say are, mm -hmm. are well protected uh for patients that are worried about you know their their uh, confidentiality, dignity. Mm -hmm, um, exactly. We want to break down all those barriers that keep somebody with mental health from seeking. Uh, just, just to add to that, um, illegal immigrants with the mobile crisis team, that's not a problem. Um, if you need to go to the hospital, it's not a problem. We don't call ICE or anything like that. We're here to help you. So not to be fearful to make a referral. If someone speaks another language, we have, find a way. we'll find a way to speak with yeah. them. We we have uh, iPads that we use so they can video call with somebody, and those uh, interpreters are also mandated to confidentiality. So there really are well. barriers here. It's confidentiality here. is kept. Mm -hmm. Language isn't an issue. Your mm -hmm. immigration status isn't an issue. Mm -hmm. You know, whatever you need, it sounds like you're able to provide here. Mm -hmm. and, and the most incredible part is that this is a mobile unit for the patients in the worst episodes of, of their life or in their of, of their mental health. Mm -hmm. um, we talked about the availability. Mm -hmm. It's quite available, 365, yeah. 12 hours a day. 12 hours a day, 365 days a year. If it's uh, 24th, we will show up December 25th. Amazing. So do not make a referral if you don't want us to show up. If you don't want us on Christmas Day, <laughs> don't, don't call don't Christmas call, Eve. Don't call Christmas Eve. They're on their way. Be there. <laughs> but, but that's important for the viewers to know, that you are available to come out there at nearly any time, that there shouldn't be hesitation for this. Mm -hmm. uh, and in one broken health and then amongst the hospitals here in the city how do you think we're doing with mental health there's more need there's definitely more need we need more funding we need more people yes 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 we need cars mobile crisis team we need more cars <laughs> because to get out to you guys in a timely manner um, the manhattan teams do use public transportation but everything's very short cash was very but here in brooklyn we need cars we're driving distances to get to people and um, we need Park them. Uh, we need more staff because 365 days a year, 12 hours a day, seven days a week is a lot of time that we have to cover. And a lot of staff that you need. So, like a younger viewer today or someone looking to change career, which seems like everyone's doing these days, <laughs> what would you say uh, to someone watching? Why become a mental health care worker? Like, go into what you do or, or mm -hmm. psychiatry, psychology? Well, if, you, if you're interested in the community and learning how people work, if you're interested about the mind, I mean, you'll never be bored in a mobile crisis. It's like being in the emergency room. You will never be bored, it's always a surprise. Uh, you go outside beautiful mansions and then you go in, you have a hoarder. You go <laughs> to the projects, and a terrible building, and then you go inside and you see this beautifully decorated home. You, you never know what's coming. You never know, uh, you think that you need the police to come to accompany you and a mild mannered person. So there is no rhyme or reason. If you like excitement, you like change, you like diversity, mobile crisis team will definitely provide. Yeah, I, I think that's it's, it's a wonderful field. Uh, uh, having you know, in medical school, we, we go through every field in a part of our training, and I, I always respected the uh, mental health care workers because it seemed like such a challenge mm -hmm. to get somebody in the doors to begin with to break down that stigma that hey, why am I going to see a mental health care worker? There must be. Some me. Well, mm -hmm. there, there might be something wrong with you, mm -hmm. but it's something that we treat and it should not be stigmatized, just like blood pressure and exactly. diabetes. And, mm -hmm. um, it's okay to to need someone like you. And, and I think we should encourage people who are watching to maybe go into a career uh, like what you do. Uh, Can I just add also yes. the peers? Um, we, oh, uh, yes. We, we talked about that before the show. This is a wonderful yes. thing. Tell us about so right now, mobile crisis teams have peers um, that are part of the teams, the people with lived experience, either in mental health and or substance use, and they've been successful. They've taken a training, which is at least nine months, I believe. They even have to do uh, like an internship or something afterwards where they are educated about mental illness and substance use and how to advocate for themselves and or patients or peers that they've been So these are with. peers who've gone through what the patient you're about to see may have already gone mm -hmm. through and they're using their experience to help bridge that it's a, it's it's amazing to see the community helping the community it is wonderful to see you dr nichols helping the community especially with this mobile crisis unit that's able to go out into people's homes it's a part of the one brooklyn health system and it's a really fabulous part of it um, i wish you luck and, and god bless you and, and the people you take care of thank you
Thank you for your interest in the show and your desire to become involved and educated. I invite you to visit our website, www.zurmed.com. Check out our tools, connect with us on social media. You can reach us at 718-510-2103. Please stay well and be safe. Goodbye.